Hello and welcome to this special show, Report Card. The financial year 2015-16 has just ended and it hasn't been kind to any of the equity or commodity markets. Wall Street indices shed a little over 1%. Commodity havens like Brazil lost 14 to 15 percent and India was middling. The Sensex and the Nifty lost around 9 percent compared with a grand 26 percent gain that they notched up in FY15 the previous year. On the show today, we will give you an interesting uh, picture of FY16 in numbers. Who all fell and how much. But more important than that, we will tell you how experts think FY17 may look like her. In a minute, we will, be, we will be speaking with veteran fund manager Vibhav Kapoor of INFS to get a handle of whether FY17 will be better than FY16. We will also be joined by Christopher Palmer, the founder and CIO at Benson Avenue Capital on how global flows may pan out. But uh, let's first check out how the India story is uh, uh, liquidity and central banks uh, stimulus will really call the tune globally. So uh, first up about that, uh, 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 before we get the India specific uh, numbers, let's look at the major world equity markets, how they performed in FY16. Mangalam Malu has compiled the numbers for us, Mangalam tell us who did well and did any equity market actually do well at all? The financial year 2016 has not rewarded equity investors too well. Tell you what, world markets down about 5.3% in 2016. Weakness reflected in the, in the emerging markets as well, down about 14%. So developed markets definitely outperform the emerging markets. But if you look at a few emerging markets, uh, the, the weakness is visible there as well. China and South Africa losing anywhere between 20 to 21% in the last financial year. This is purely in dollar terms. Brazil and India down 15 percent as well. Russia is the key outperformer there with still a cut of two and a half percent. Not just that, if you look at uh, key developed markets as well, US down 1.2 percent, Europe down about 11 percent, also United Kingdom, France down about 12 and a half and 7 percent apiece. Take a look at a few Asian markets as well, Japan and Hong Kong, both of them down 9 percent each. If you look at a few emerging markets who have performed well, well Hungary is the only market that stands out with a gain of 37 percent, but Russia and Turkey both of them still outperforming but down about two and a half and four percent in 2016 rather FY 2016 itself the developed markets the gainers we have the Irish markets the Danish markets and the New Zealand market all of them gaining anywhere between one to six percent but the U United States also did outperform the world markets down about 1.2 percent negative still if you look at the worst performing emerging markets Greek was down about 53 percent the Greek markets rather eroded half of the market cap and some market cap erosion was seen in Egypt, China, South Africa and Colombia as well. Moving on then to the worst performing developed markets, Spanish markets, Norwegian markets, Italian markets, all of them down anywhere between 17 to 20 percent, while Singapore was also down 15 percent. So not a good year for equities world over. Hope 2016, 2017 is much better. All right. Thanks a lot for that, Mangalam. So the, to cut a long story short, no equity market generated returns except I think frontier markets which you left out like probably Vietnam and Karachi. But uh, Indian markets were middling. Like I told you, it's uh, about a minus 10 percent. Uh, uh, not as good as uh, some of the developed markets, but not as bad as some of the commodity emerging markets. Nigel D'Souza is here to give us the lowdown on how the Indian markets did in FY16. Nigel. Well, I thought the FIs, uh, they, they didn't bail us out this time around. So in the, in the financial year that's gone by, they sold close to around 2,000 crores approximately. As you said, yes, the Nifty has lost close to around 9, 9 to around 10%. It's in the last uh, one year approximately but in dollar terms if you just take a look at it, the sensex has lost in fact 15 percent taking into account the rupee depreciation as well the big index losers up for you in the screen we have psu banking stocks metal index as well as the farmer index all of them have got smacked and look at the nifty losers just look at the commodity driven stocks they are the biggest losers so vedanta and hindalco in their defensive stocks this time they didn't bail us out so we had the likes of sipla as well as tech mahindra in there 
with losses of around 25 to around 30 percent approximately. Banks and financial stocks as well, they got hammered some of them because we have the likes of PNB as well as SPI losing between around 25 percent to around 40 percent approximately and big boy HDFC as well took a knock of closure around 15 percent. The other big losers are as well are flashing for you. L&D lost closure around 30 percent of its market capitalization in the fiscal that went by. But thank God for Reliance Industries because that stock really supported the Nifty. It gave you returns of more than 25 percent. So that's what really prevented the Nifty from falling apart. But from the broader markets, there was a relative outperformance because we had the mid cap index that was down only around 3 percent. And the big winners are flashing for you. Indocom gave you returns of more than 150 percent. We have uh, Petronet as well in there with gains of more than 40 percent. And from the broader markets, JSW Steel from the Ferris space really stands out. That gave you returns of more than 40 percent. Switching to the losers then, some of these highly leveraged counters, they got beaten. So JP Associates is in there. We have JSPL as well that got smacked. And some of these banking stocks as well, the likes of, of Orient Bank, Bank of India, they have got hit. But let's finish off on a very positive note because we had some of these small cap stocks, a couple of sugar stocks that gave you returns of closure on 900% as well. They are flashing for you on the screen from the broader markets, some big gainers. Back to you. Thanks a lot for that neat roundup, uh, Nigel. Well, the short point uh, from the market has always been that even if commodity stocks were generally punished, there were uh, uh, outstanding people, those who could stand out in spite of a bad trend like JSW Ferris, which uh, uh, being a Ferris uh, uh, stock still did exceptionally well. Likewise, in the banks, the wide variety of performance shows that uh, Overall trends notwithstanding, individual company performances can always shine. And that's why we need fund managers. We need fund managers like Vibhav Kapoor of ILNFS who joins us now. We are also joined by Christopher Palmer, founder and CIO at Benson Avenue Capital. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining me today uh, to give us an idea of FY17 might pan out. Uh, well, let me start with you, Christopher, first. Uh, Oh, well, uh, uh, the uh, year gone by, uh, financial year FI16, has not been kind to emerging markets. But towards the end, uh, from say mid-February onwards, we have seen a resumption of uh, foreign flows into emerging markets. Will FI17 generally see emerging markets preferred at all? I wouldn't say that emerging markets have become preferred uh, in 2016, but surely what we've seen is a lot of short covering of, in, of investors uh, who were underweight. Uh, some of our research indicates that European and U.S. investors are the most underweight emerging markets they've ever been relative to, let's say, uh, a GDP-weighted neutral position. So that means there's been a scramble to get back into these markets as investors have perceived there's been a bottom in those markets. One of the catalysts of this, of course, is the Fed's reversal of its position recently regarding interest rate rises, which has had profound uh, implications for the dollar. Uh, and uh, as there's a, a weaker dollar or a trend towards a weaker dollar, that's generally good for a lot of the emerging markets. So I wouldn't say it's a, a big turnaround, but certainly we've seen the bottom and we should see more stable markets for emerging markets. Okay. Uh, we'll come back to you with your, uh, to get your preferences uh, in terms of uh, equity markets overall and emerging markets in particular. But uh, Vibhav, uh, uh, you did sound very positive when we spoke to you probably about uh, a month ago. And since then, the Indian markets have uh, risen, what, 13-14% from the budget day lows? Uh, what does FI17 look like? Uh, can we put in another 15%? Uh, 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 will it be definitely better than FI16? Yes, well, FI16 was really a roller coaster year, and it was a very, very tough year uh, for all equity investors and for fund managers. Uh, and but for the last one month, which was February, uh, sorry, March, uh, the markets would have been much worse, or they would have looked much worse than they looked at the end of March. They would have been down more than 20% rather than 9 and 10%, which they are. Uh, so FI16 had a lot of both, you know, international problems as well as domestic problems. You had a roller coaster ride on U.S. interest rates. They are going up. They are not going up. The dollar is strengthening. It's weakening. You had the China problem, you had a big fall in commodities, uh, Europe never recovered from what it was expected to recover. And then you had Indian problems in the sense that the economy didn't take off as much as was expected. Uh, you had bad monsoons, uh, the banks were in a bad state, the NPS situation didn't improve. So all in all it was a pretty, pretty difficult year. 
Mm. I think F five seventeen is slated to be far better uh, than F five sixteen. That's the that's the sort of opinion we've been holding mm. for the last couple of months, mm. uh, and there are several reasons for it. Um, I think it's going to be a more stable year. One. Uh, the whole underperformance of the emerging markets, I think, is coming to an end. Uh, emerging markets have underperformed the developed markets for a fairly long period of time by a very substantial amount. Mm. So that, I think, is coming to an end now, partly because, of course, the dollar uh, is not expected to appreciate as much. Interest rates in the U.S. are not expected to go up so much. Partly because the valuation differences have become very high, particularly between the U.S. markets and the, some of the emerging markets. Uh, secondly, because we think that the commodity uh, cycle has bottomed out, which may not mean that you know commodity prices will shoot up, mm -hmm. but I think they are definitely bottomed out and are going to improve from here. That's good for emerging markets. Um, and as far as um, India is concerned, I think hopefully, as we said earlier, we've had two bad monsoons. Hopefully, we'll have a better monsoon this mm -hmm. year. And in addition to that, I think a lot of steps which the government has been taking are now gradually beginning to have a positive impact on the economy. Mm -hmm. uh, and you should see that borne out over the next 12 months. Okay. So, what about the elusive earnings growth picture? Uh, almost every quarter in FY16 now, Vibhav, uh, we were expecting that the earnings turnaround happens two quarters down the line. Uh, now, would you say that uh, Q4 numbers, which are due uh, in a couple of weeks, will be that earnings uh, generating quarter? Or will earnings growth come in FY17? If yes, how much? Okay. Yeah, Lata, I think that's a very, very important point. The net impact of all this actually has been that earnings have not grown. Mm -hmm. And I think now we've seen about, what, two years, maybe three years of flat earnings. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, the, the, I think the uh, analyst community was too positive. They were exuberant uh, two years ago when the new government came in and expected earnings to start improve very rapidly, which didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So every quarter you saw earnings downgrades happening. I think now we are reaching a stage where those earnings downgrades are almost going to come to an end. Earnings expectations are more in line with realistic fundamentals now. Although I'd like to warn that, you know, this last quarter of FI 40, you know, of FI 16, which the results will come in now, will still be a disappointing quarter. Oh. But a lot of that has been factored in now. Mm. And I think FI 17, you could see for the first time earnings growth of somewhere between maybe 15 percent to 17 percent happening hopefully although some because some people are still lower than that say about 12 13 percent mm. but it'll certainly be a better year mm. than fi 16 as far as earnings growth is concerned okay well we will take 14 15 percent earnings growth with both hands considering the very flat low single digit that we have seen uh, let's do one thing uh, we'll go into a break but we are back with a, a lot more specific questions to our guests to christopher on what are exactly the markets that he prefers and to vibhav on the sectors and stocks that he prefers for fi 17 back in a minute